Welcome back. We're now delighted to be joined over the telephone by His Excellency Ambassador Mithat al Miliyi, former Assistant Foreign Minister. It's a very good afternoon to you, Mr. Ambassador. Good afternoon to you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for joining us this afternoon. And of course, the Foreign Minister is meeting with the Jordanian and French counterparts today. Uh, holding uh, many uh, talks, tackling the latest regional developments, chief amongst them the Palestinian cause as well as the Israeli war on the Gaza Strip. How do you see, Your Excellency, the possibility of moving forward with regards to the war in Gaza, a possibility uh, of reaching a ceasefire in the near future? Well, actually, we have to say that all the powers who can actually exert any kind of pressure on the concerned parties are doing their utmost now. Indeed. I mean, we have already the, the, the UN Security Council Resolution 2728. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, a decision from the United States, although mm -hmm. a hazy one, to implement it, and, uh, well, which, is, which is a very confusing issue, actually. Uh, because, I mean, I don't know why we should, should we implement something that is non-binding, but mm -hmm. this is the American point of view that nobody understands except the, uh, the, the American administration, unfortunately. Yes. But we still have the ground to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, the Jordanian and the Egyptians are both very much concerned about the situation. We are, they are the direct neighbors to the Palestinians, and accordingly they are doing their utmost. Yes. The French that they always want to uh, show some kind of uh, diversion from the mainstream EU position, are also trying to help out, especially with the first accord uh, that were, uh, were, were unfortunately not, not yet implemented, were the, the Paris Accords. And uh, in this, we are all trying to move forward to reach a certain uh, agreement mm -hmm. so that we can end the month of Ramadan in a peaceful way for the Palestinian with a deal that Israel can commit to, which is something actually very difficult, but we hope, I mean, we have to understand that most of the observers have been reluctant to say that they are optimistic about this new round since we heard so many promises before mm. about a very close deal that is about to be uh, declared and yet nothing so far on the table. So we hope that this time we will be able to manage to reach a swap of the prisoners from both sides and accordingly a truce or a, term, a lasting, uh, since the United States refused the word permanent, a lasting uh, ceasefire between the two sides and the cessation of uh, ground hostilities from the Israeli, especially in the Rafah area. Indeed, absolutely, Your Excellency. And we're seeing, of course, still the attacks are ongoing uh, on the Gaza Strip. Uh, the humanitarian situation on the ground has escalated uh, to, as the United Nations said, famine. Uh, an enduring famine has ensued. How do you see, you know, this deterioration of the humanitarian uh, situation on the ground and some of the steps that have been taken by countries like Egypt, Jordan, and the UAE of airdropping uh, food uh, to assist with just getting the basic needs to the Palestinians? Unfortunately, we have to be clear on this, that Israel as an occupation force still has the upper hand on all what can enter from any regular crossing or borders surrounding the, uh, the Gaza enclave. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, whether we are talking about Rafah, of course, the Palestinian side of the Rafah border, or we are talking about any crossing from the Jordanian side or yes. from the Israeli side. Israel is the one controlling them. Mm -hmm. And since Israel is putting as many obstacles as it could, although claiming the opposite, uh, but since it's putting as many obstacles as it could to ground uh, humanitarian aid, entering uh, to, to Gaza, we are forced to resort to these extreme measures about air droppings or about sea uh, ports in order to reach the Palestinians. Unfortunately, the amount of food that can be dropped is, is totally irrelevant and, and, and uh, irrelative of the amount that is needed for the Palestinians who are starving right now and mm. facing a famine situation. But since Israel is the occupation force and it controls uh, everything, so this is the only mean 
and and resource that we can have to uh, to uh, give any kind of humanitarian aid to the Palestinian. Unfortunately, uh, due to the Israeli position that so far it has not comply with the humanitarian international law and accept the entrance. I mean, the reports are very clear from various um, uh, non-biased and international and United Nations organizations. All of them are talking about a genocide that has been taking place to the Palestinian. Actually, you don't need an expert for that. We are all seeing the Palestinians starving, which is a clear situation uh, b before the eyes of the whole international community. Mm -hmm. However, Israel is still insisting that it will not ease its grip on the Palestinian civilians until uh, this war is over. And the, the date of the end of this war is only in the hands of the Israeli government, who insists on continuing this uh, war to secure its place as uh, a government ruling in Israel for the time being. Absolutely, Your Excellency. Now, we've seen the Egyptian position with regards to the uh, displacement of the Palestinians uh, from Gaza, very strongly rejected uh, by Egypt. How do you see for this, and how do you see counter calls, for example, by countries like Egypt calling for the two-state solution, getting back to the negotiating table between uh, the uh, Israelis and Palestinians? Well, I mean, the idea of, uh, uh, of repeating mm. our point of view that we've been repeating even before the 7th of October and before this war uh, was started. I mean, our position is firm and clear and set by all the officials, starting from the executive officials of the government of Egypt all the way up to the president of the republic himself. Mm. We are talking about a two-state solution in a boundary. Our president was the first one even to talk about uh, uh, a demilitarized uh, Palestinian state uh, before anybody even uh, starts talking about it. And yet Israel, who is not ready for peace, unfortunately, still insists on waging its war and keeping uh, the Palestinian in this open air prison that is now becoming an enclave, actually. Mm. It's not the whole area of Gaza. We are talking just about Safa, where almost 1.7 million persons are squeezed in this uh, tiny area of, 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 of their own land, and uh, still they don't want to commit to peace. So the ideas are there. Egypt is repeating its point of view, of course, with the, 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 the Jordanian, of course, even the French. Even the United States is in favor of a two-state solution. So the only obstacle has to be clear before the eyes of the international community is Israel. It is the only force and the only power who is objecting to the two-state solution and actually doing whatever it takes to prevent this second state, which is the state of the, the Palestinians, to be uh, uh, erected in any way, in any form. Unfortunately, this is the situation as it is right now, hmm. and due to the American a year of elections, uh, no candidate is ready, or even the current president, the surviving himself, mm. is ready to lose the votes of the Jewish community and the Jewish lobby in the United States, and accordingly, he does not take. We, we've just seen, although he's been preaching about the two-state solution and the, 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 the necessity of not entering uh, Rabah, and yet yesterday, there was a new arms deal with new uh, arms and ammunition and airplanes and every piece of equipment that Israel needs to launch and continue its war on the Palestinians is accepted. Indeed. Unfortunately, this is what I meant from the beginning when I said that the United States is giving us mixed messages, messages to the point that we are not we do not understand what do they mean. It's very confusing, uh, starting from a non-binding resolution, but it has to be implemented, uh, starting by uh, the two states, but yet they are giving Israel arms to continue the, its genocide against the Palestinian people. And those mixed messages are leaving the whole world confused about the real position of the United States, mm -hmm. which I believe it is to support Israel unconditionally no matter what they say.
Absolutely. And this is the real problem that we're facing right now. Indeed, Your Excellency. Now, we've seen the latest moves by the International Court of Justice to, uh, you know, tell Israel that it has to uh, implement its ruling as well as allow humanitarian aid uh, to reach the needy uh, people that need it in uh, Palestine, etc. Yet, on the other side, we've seen Netanyahu preparing for ground assault uh, in Rafah. So, how do you see, you know, the lack of compliance to any ruling? Well, so far we haven't seen a unanimous decision or even a majority decision about stop arming Israel, about boycotting Israel, and about uh, not giving Israel more uh, war tools, as we can call them. Mm. And uh, because this is not there, this resolution, this word resolution has to be there, we also heard, uh, to add to what you just mentioned, the special rapporteur on... Uh, on the occupied territories that say that also Israel has to be prevented from receiving more arms. Unfortunately, these uh, theoretic uh, judgments are not uh, implemented simply because the world, and I'm talking here about the world, who supplies arms. Those countries who are supplying Israel with arms are still giving Israel arms. Of course, they, there are always excuses. I mean, like like the aeroplanes that the United States is going to give, to give them to Israel. This is a deal that we agreed on in 2008. And today only they are going to give it to them, which is actually a kind of a ridiculous cause that mm. the, the Americans are using. And this is the main point. As long as we are giving Israel arms, we cannot ask it to stop its ground operation mm -hmm. because they're accomplished. And we have to name things the way they are, which is the United States are giving Israel arms. And accordingly, it, it is accepting the idea as a fact that they launched their uh, ground operation in Rafah. This is what we have to understand. Even though they claim that they do not accept or they do not approve mm. of the operation. But it doesn't make sense that they do not approve. And yet I am giving Israel You're more assisting. arms. To, to continue with its aggression. Mm -hmm. and Israel, so, mm -hmm. I'm listening. <clears throat> yes, sorry, Your Excellency. And Israel has even gone, you know, as far as trying to get uh, uh, the United Nations aid, uh, um, UNRWA, for example, to stop uh, working, to stop uh, assisting uh, Palestinian refugees uh, uh, in uh, the country. How do you see, you know, the, the wide reach of Israel to try and cover every possible way to implement their genocidal uh, war on Gaza? Well, the UNRWA, this is uh, a body that was created in order for the Palestinian, to, uh, the Palestinian refugees to receive all kinds of things that they need as refugees, mm. starting from education, uh, health, all the way up to food and so on. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this body is created because of the Israeli veto, let's say, uh, created only for Israel, only for the Palestinian, I'm sorry, because actually the Palestinian, like all other refugees, should be dealt with through the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, mm -hmm. the UNHCR, which is the official organization of the United Nations to treat any refugee case. But yet, Israel chose that uh, uh, the Palestinians should not be dealt with through the UNHCR and can they only be dealt with through their own ROA. Mm. And yet by this, if they want to stop the work of on ROA, so only the Palestinian people are hurt, which is something they cannot do to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees because they cannot hold it work since it's not just addressed to the Palestinians. Mm. And that's why I agree that this organization, after this war, has to be abolished. We have to reverse again the, the position and get back to the original position, which is to deal with the Palestinians through the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and not through the UNRWA that Israel could cut or any other country, as we, as we have seen in mm. recent history, that because of some allegations uh, that were never proven, Israel Indeed. never presented any, uh, any proof mm. that those 10 or 8 workers mm. who represent 0.03% of total numbers of workers with the, with the UNRWA, mm. and they said that they were implicated in the 7th of October attack. Mm -hmm. And although they never proved anything, but this was enough for many countries, especially in, uh, in the West, 
to and the United States and Canada mm -hmm. to stop funding this organization. And by that, they are only hurting the Palestinian people. Absolutely. But if they were dealt with with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, they will not be able to do that. Having said that, this is the only ground for the time being on the ground that can help to distribute the food to the starving population of, the, of Palestine. Absolutely. And they have to remain in position, although over 150 of their staff were killed intentionally by Israel, hmm. but this did not provoke anything which is, expressed, by the way, 15 times more the number of accused Palestinians of helping with the 7th of October mm -hmm. attack. Mm -hmm. And yet, this did not provoke in the world community anything as much as it provoked the allegations that were never proven by Israel, which once, once again proved that and the whole world is speaking the cause of it. Unfortunately, Absolutely. this is the reality. And Egypt to keep on pushing forward to reach a fair and uh, final support the Palestinian with, with the Israeli and the thing, and we were going to fight until the end for a two-state solution. This is the only security that Israel needs, and the only way that, that the Palestinian can finally breathe and have the right to extermination. Absolutely right. I'd like to thank you very, very much, Your Excellency Ambassador Midhat El Minigi, former assistant to Foreign Minister. Thank you so much, sir, for your time and your insight on today's edition of Car Local Time. A short break and we'll be back for more. Do stay tuned.